In this video, I want to talk about HLA genetics. And as I've mentioned in another video before, MHC and HLA mean the exact same molecules. MHC stands for major histocompatibility complex. And histocompatibility can be translated in tissue compatibility. Because if you transplant somebody's kidney to somebody else, you need to make sure that these patients have both the same MHC molecules. So these MHC molecules have, in addition to their role in antigen presentation, what I've discussed in another video, a very important role in tissue compatibility. And the reason for that is because these HLA molecules are unique to you. So they are like an identifier tag and they identify you as you. So it is very unlikely that, for example, any of us that are listening at the same time to this lecture have the same HLA genes. And if somebody of us would get from another person a kidney transplanted, our immune system would recognize these other ID tags and would reject the kidney. So there's a huge diversity. How do we get this diversity and why do we need it? And these are the two questions that I want to answer. So let's talk a little bit about genetics and isotypes. So for, for the MHC1 genes, there are actually three different isotypes. There's HLA-A, HLA-B, and HLA-C. And these are called the isotypes. So we can also put as a header genetics and isotypes. That's what we want to discuss. So isotype is by definition different genes that code for proteins with very similar functions. So they are all very similar in terms of their function. They can all do antigen presentation but they are different, different types. So you can think about the MHC1 isotypes as being flowers. And here you have roses, tulips, and daisies. So just different kinds of flowers. Same for MHC2. So here we have also three isotypes, HLA-DP, DQ, and DR. And you must know these names, and they're easy to Remember, so the MHC1 isotypes have just one letter, A, B, C, and the two isotypes have two letters, DP, DQ, and DR. Now, in addition of having different isotypes, there are hundreds of different alleles for most of these HLA genes. That means that each individual is most likely heterogeneous for each HLA gene. So just to recap, until now we have different isotypes, so we can say different types of flowers, roses, tulips, and daisies. But then we have 50 different alleles, so let's say 50 different kinds of roses, 100 different kinds of tulips, and 100 different types of lilies, and so on and so forth. So that gets us quite some diversity. And then we get one set of HLA isotypes from mom and one set from dad. So let's draw this out. So we have three MHC1 isotypes from dad. So A, B, C, HLA, A, B, and C. And there are many different alleles. So let's suppose we have A1, B15, and C27. And then for mom, we also have A, B, C, and there are also different alleles, let's say A5, B8, and C43. And we can draw the same out for the MHC2 isotypes, DP, DQ, and DR. So that's going to be from father, let's say DP10, DQ38, and DR32. And then from mom, let's say we get DP12, DQ25, DR21. And obviously I just picked now random numbers, but just to demonstrate to you that we have many different alleles of these different isotypes. And the chance that you're going to get the same from mom and dad is very, very low. So most individuals are heterozygous 
for each HLA gene. And also, if you wonder why I put here two boxes, well, for the HLA DP, DQ, DR, we actually have an alpha and a beta domain. And that's why I made them two boxes. Now let's just think about a scenario. So now let's just think what MHCs do our macrophages express? And let's think about this for a second. Would we expect MHC1 and MHC2 on macrophages? Or only MHC1 or only MHC2? Pause for a second and think about what a macrophage would express. So let's draw out the macrophage. So the macrophage is a cell with this kidney-shaped nucleus. And I hope you came up with that macrophages are so-called antigen-presenting cells. So these are the sophisticated cells that have also the capacity to sample what's found outside the cell. So we're going to have MHC2 and also as every nucleated cell has MHC1. So we will have the three different isotypes of MHC1, A, B, C, from dad and then from mom. So we're going to express, our macrophages are expressing a total of six MHC1 genes and then also six MHC2 genes. Now let's draw out the same for a neutrophil. Take a second and try to come up with it. So let's draw out the neutrophil. So the neutrophil has this trilobular nucleus. And now what types of MHC molecules would we expect on the neutrophil? I hope you all agree that we're only going to see MHC1. So only HLA, A, B, and C genes. Why? Because the neutrophil is not the sophisticated antigen presenting cell, so it's a cell like any nucleated cell that needs to alarm the immune system if it has been infected. So we only need MHC1 molecules. And again, there's always going to be three isotypes from dad and three isotypes from mom. Now we have discussed a lot about the diversity of this MHC molecules. And again, we have three isotypes and then there are many alleles. So most of us will be heterozygous for this MHC genes. But I didn't mention yet why this is so important that we have this diversity. Well, you can come up with it because I mentioned before that the MHC molecules are the ones that alarm the immune system. So Let's suppose we are infected with a completely new pathogen. And that's what the world was talking now over the last one and a half years. We had a completely new pathogen, the coronavirus. So ideally, we want to have some MHC molecules that can present this coronavirus. And because we have so many different alleles, really the difference is the variations occur in specific locations nearby this binding grove. So what makes us different MHC alleles is kind of this domain here that binds to the peptide. So the more differences we have, the higher the chance that we can present a new peptide to alarm the immune system. And fortunately, each MHC can express any one of thousands of different peptides. So I hope that underlined the importance of the diversity of this MHC molecules. And this concludes the video on MHC HLA genetics.